Hey guys, welcome to another edition of The Wild Side with Clay. And this week we talk about this creature that can be found underground, but his rel relatives often are found in the water. Who is it? Find out this week on The Wild Side. Welcome to this edition of The Wild Side, where our guest is a barred tiger salamander. Look at this creature. Now, of course, the tiger salamander, or barred tiger salamander, was given its name because of this beautiful color pattern on its body. Look at that. Almost looks like the big cat namesake that it's named after. Believe it or not, they're also sometimes referred to as the mud puppy. But mud puppies are a completely different species of animal. Now, a tiger salamander is the largest known terrestrial salamander in all of North America. Now, I say known because there could be a new species undiscovered somewhere else on planet Earth. But right now, it's definitely the longest in North America, but possibly even the world. Growing up to lengths of 14 inches long, the tiger salamander spends a lot of its time not in the water, like the giant Japanese salamander, which get uh, multiple feet long. This animal spends a lot of time underground. Now, they range from southern Texas to Canada, from California, east of the Dakotas, and into Oklahoma. They're found in a variety of diverse habitats, including forests, fields, meadows, grasslands, and deserts. Now, as an adult, the tiger salamander is mostly nocturnal, spending a lot of its time underground in burrows. Tiger salamander's diet includes a lot of invertebrates. They'll eat things like earthworms, mealworms, crickets, uh, and really, really small fish. But they might also eat other amphibians. Now, like all salamanders, the tiger salamander has multiple phases of its life. Of course, when these animals breed, uh, they breed in the spring and the summer. Females will lay their eggs uh, in a clutch uh, in a kind of a variety of different substrates or in the water itself. Now, after 19 to 50 days or so, they start their life in the water dog stage. Little larvae swimming around uh, slow moving streams. They look like fish, uh, little tiny fish babies. In fact, some people sell them as bait when they're that age. Now, when then there's a larval state, they have external gills. Now, some tiger salamanders have been known to be neonetic. And what that means is they retain their gills even into adulthood. So how does a salamander like this breathe after it loses its gills? Well, it's really cool. Because it's a terrestrial amphibian, these animals use the floor of their mouth, the bottom of their mouth, and they move it up and down, pumping oxygen into their body and allowing them to breathe. But also because they're amphibians, they breathe through their skin, meaning these animals are an indicator species. If the environment is dirty, if the water is dirty, if the air is dirty, if the soil is polluted, their bodies will absorb those toxins faster than any other animal in their environment. And you'll see the die off of amphibians a lot quicker than birds or mammals or even fish. Indicator species are important to biologists because they allow the biologists to learn the health of the environment that they're studying. Now again, this animal is primarily nocturnal, living underground in burrows. But if you're lucky enough to see one, please don't pick it up and handle it. Leave it be because it's an awesome North American species. Now tiger salamander like Hobbs are pretty cool. In fact, Hobbs, my friend here, is more than 15 years old. 15 is the life expectancy of the barred tiger salamander. As always, folks, thanks for tuning into this episode of The Wild Side. Now remember, conservation rules, find your wild side, and we'll see you the next time we walk on the wild side of a unique species. Until next time, everyone, for now, I think I'm going to go put this little guy back in the burrow that I got him out of, and we're going to go on to our next adventure. See you down the road, folks. <laughs>